Testifying before Congress today on the cyber attack that caused gas shortages across the southeast last month, Joseph Blount says it could take months to restore the company's facilities to full operation after that ransomware attack forced the pipeline to shut down for several days. The company eventually paid $4.4 million in ransom to get their systems back online. But the Department of Justice announced yesterday that they recovered a lot of that ransom money from the hacker's Bitcoin wallet. Blount said they quietly and quickly worked with law enforcement from the start, which may have helped lead to that recovery. Also in today's update, nearly 800 people have been arrested around the world in a coordinated global sting operation led by the FBI. Law enforcement officials from 16 different countries used an encrypted communications app developed by the FBI to track down gangs who traffic in drugs and arrange hits. The sting, dubbed Operation Trojan Shield, seized more than $48 million in cash and cryptocurrencies, hundreds of firearms, more than 50 luxury cars, and over 32 tons of cocaine and other narcotics. And major websites are coming back online after a massive internet outage this morning. Twitter, Reddit, and Twitch were all affected, as well as news sites like CNN, The New York Times, and The Guardian. The outage was due to a problem with a cloud service called Fastly, which allows sites to store content on its servers. Fastly says the problem has been patched, but the exact cause is still unknown. And there's a potential breakthrough in the battle against Alzheimer's disease. The FDA has conditionally approved a new treatment for the first time in nearly 20 years. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details. This morning, a historic development in the fight against Alzheimer's. The FDA conditionally approving the first new treatment for the disease in nearly two decades. Biogen's aducanumab, which goes by the brand name Adjuhelm, is a monthly infusion for patients with early stage Alzheimer's. Its goal? to slow cognitive decline. It's the first treatment that targets how the disease works, not just the symptoms. Kevin Bonham was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's disease when he was 58 years old. He joined a clinical trial in 2017. I could just feel my, the fog would just lift. But despite enthusiasm for the drug, some criticism and questions. Trials ended in 2019 after data didn't show enough evidence the drug works. The FDA's advisory panel declining to recommend the drug in November. Some experts saying the benefits don't outweigh the risks, like potential brain swelling and bleeding. We have witnessed firsthand how this treatment has helped Kevin. The FDA's announcement falls under its accelerated approval pathway. The FDA asking Biogen to conduct a new trial to prove the drug's efficacy or the approval could be revoked. We actually need to continue to learn about Adjuhelm's benefit in patients of different stages of disease. And one of the criticisms surrounding this drug, the price, it's listed at $56,000 a year. Biogen says it will offer financial assistance programs for those with insurance, and it's working with Medicare to come up with an affordable option. They hope to have this drug shipping out to a pharmacy near you in about two weeks. Diane. All right. Eva Pilgrim in Brooklyn for us. Thank you. And earlier on GMA, ABC News chief medical correspondent Dr. Jen Ashton discussed this new drug and its potential benefits for patients and their families. Let's listen. Tell us more about this drug, what it's supposed to do, and whom it's designed to help. So this is for people who were diagnosed with early Alzheimer's, so mild cognitive impairment. And as we heard in the piece, it is supposed to really target the cause, not the symptoms. Now, the devil is in the details. Patients will need an MRI and then follow up MRIs regularly. And it is an intravenous administration, so it's given once a month and then monthly thereafter. So um, not a pill um, and obviously requires some in-hospital setting to give the drug. But it doesn't come without some controversy because the FDA's own independent advisory panel, they voted against, rec right. they did not want to recommend this drug, but the FDA approved it anyway. What were their concerns? And and how rare is it for the FDA to go against their own panel's advice? Well, I think, first of all, the, the second half of your question is it does happen, and that's why these approvals and authorizations are not a foregone conclusion, but controversy for two main reasons. Number one, efficacy. In clinical trials, one did not show any effect, and one showed a very, very marginal effect on an 18-point scale, only a fraction of a point of improvement. And the second is this theory about how it works. 
that theory about these beta amyloid proteins or plaques mm -hmm. is a theory. It is not generally accepted. So again, when you talk about efficacy, that's part of the reason for controversy here. And then safety, when you talk about 40% risk of brain swelling, 17% of people in clinical trials had microscopic hemorrhages, risk benefit, it's not clear cut. All right, our thanks to Michael and Dr. Ashton for that analysis. And more dangerously high temperatures are in store for the Midwest and the Northeast. Heat advisories have been issued from Minneapolis to Philadelphia today, where it could feel like 95 degrees or higher. ABC News senior meteorologist Rob Marciano is tracking it all for us. Good morning, Rob. Hey, good morning, Diane. For those of us who were lucky enough to get an afternoon cooling thunder shower yesterday, now that that humidity is laying even thicker in the air. A steamy day today in some parts of the country in the Northeast getting a full on heat wave. That is technically three days of 90 degrees or above. Philadelphia, you have indeed done that. So people trying to cool off any way they can in, in the sprinklers and in the pool systems. Uh, if you are out in the heat today, Avoid outdoor strenuous activities, wear light, loose colored clothing, drink plenty of water, even when you're not thirsty and take breaks and give a break to those who do have to work in some of these conditions for sure. We do have some cooling on the way, by the way, but we still have to deal with this ongoing heat wave, which, by the way, is linked to climate change. When you get them this early in the season, this far north and this intense, look at Minneapolis. This is like the sixth day in a row of 90 plus degree heat, 97 for you. This will probably go down as the longest stretch this early in the season for Minneapolis. And I mentioned the humidity along the I-9. 95 corridor heat advisories up for Boston, Hartford, uh, Philadelphia as well. Again, today, hazy, hot and humid conditions. But there is some relief on the way. Not today, not really tomorrow, maybe a little bit on Thursday when this cool front finally comes through. And then look at Friday temperatures, a shock to the system there into the mid 60s. Might even need a light jacket. That may very well feel good. Diane. All right. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. Thank you. And today is World Oceans Day, established by the U.N. to raise awareness about protecting our oceans. Coral reefs around the world are under threat from climate change, but there's a new effort to rebuild them in Florida using underwater mermaid statues. Victor Kendo's in West Palm Beach, Florida, with that story. Mermaids, mythical creatures of the sea, bringing new life to Florida's coast. Why mermaids? What's this project all about? So the A Thousand Mermaids Project is one of our eco art projects where we sculpt people as mermaids to bring awareness to marine conservation. The Ocean Rescue Alliance planning to install 1,000 of these giant mermaid sculptures up and down the state. Weighing between 2,000 and 5,000 pounds, they're made out of organic materials helping to revitalize coral communities. Coral reefs are critical for our ecosystems. They are extremely important for helping protect our coastal communities and really integrating a lot of different important environmental factors from sequestering nutrients and really helping facilitate a holistic ecosystem. Coral reefs are the lungs of the ocean and the most diverse ecosystem in the world, home to nearly a quarter of the planet's fish. But across the globe, they are slowly dying off, due in part to climate change. It's extremely impactful. The reef has so much opportunity, and a lot of people don't realize how of an untapped resource it can be. Welcome to the Ocean Rescue Alliance. The Ocean Rescue Alliance is working to combat the degradation of coral reefs in a unique way. We predominantly focus on creating complex artificial reef structure that creates fish habitat and enables us to outplant coral or oysters. Mermaids attracting divers and marine life in our oceans. What's it like when you see these come to life, surrounded by everything in the sea? It's, it's quite amazing. I, it's, it, it's a surreal experience to really just see the different biodiverse fish communities that move in and the different coral growth and sponges that recruit to the structures. The project started right here in the West Palm area. There are actually 35 of those mermaid reefs in the waters underneath our drone. If you're interested and you want to go out on a dive, see them for yourself. They have the coordinates. The Ocean Rescue Alliance has them listed up on their website. They have a lot of work ahead, though. The plan is to install 1,000 of those mermaid reefs up and down Florida's coast. Diane. All right. Pretty cool. Victor Kendo, thank you. And thousands of people are taking part in a study that could tell us a lot about the risks of going to a concert in the age of COVID. We've got the latest on that after the break.
Welcome back. It's looking like the U.S. will not hit President Biden's goal of 70 percent vaccinations by July 4th. A new Gallup poll shows that 78 percent of adults who are not planning to get the shot say they're unlikely to reconsider. So how can we reopen safely if everyone is not vaccinated? And how do you make places like museums or concerts safe? Well, Paris held a high stakes experiment where thousands attended a concert to see how big of a risk COVID is if not everyone's vaccinated, but still tested and masked. ABC's Ibtisem Genford went inside to see how it all played out. When the lights go out and the crowd goes, you know something special is about to happen. It's amazing. After months of lockdown in Paris, 5,000 concert goers dancing in unison to their favorite song. All in the name of science. For Lisa Sade, an opportunity to have a sense of normalcy. There was a nostalgia of, oh, we're all back together at the same time. Paris holding this giant experimental concert just days ago to learn about the risks COVID poses at big events. No social distancing, but all attendees have to wear masks and get tested. What if the results that come back are not good? We don't, uh, that's not an option. French authorities spending over a million dollars on the initiative for a team of scientists to compare 15,000 tests of participants with regular Parisians. That's just one part of the scramble in Europe as it gears up for a return of tourists. La première destination. The first destination Americans are looking to come to is Paris. And when people come to Paris, it's for the Parisian lifestyle. Outdoor cafes are back, which is a huge part of our identity. People also need to be able to go to museums to see live shows. France announcing it will open its doors to vaccinated Americans on June 9th. France, like the rest of Europe, badly needs tourist dollars this summer. The EU economy shrinking 6.8 percent over the last year. It means that despite some COVID restrictions, Paris's biggest sites are reopening. The Louvre welcoming visitors again, but the most popular museum in the world still operating at half capacity. This is a very strange site. This room usually is packed with visitors. The queue normally goes all the way to the back of the room with people eager to take a look at the world's most famous painting, the Mona Lisa. It's quite nice to sort of experience it yeah. in its bare bones form. It's very nice. We feel pretty lucky. Yeah, very lucky. In the U.S., some states reopening by making offers like the chance to win the lottery. We will start with number 18. And free sports tickets to get more people to take the jab. The French government here taking a different approach. In France, that wouldn't work. It would be very badly received by a part of the population that would say, well, wait, if they are trying to convince me to get a vaccine in exchange for retribution, that means that the vaccine is not good enough in itself. This experiment could be a turning point. In just days, Lisa Sade's test will help determine how France, like much of the world, will return to normal. If scientists can prove the rate of transmission didn't increase, it means France and Europe can soon party again. I just enjoy really having a lot of sweaty people next to me and, and getting in the vibe. It was really nice. It's Tissam Genfood in Paris for ABC News. Our thanks to Ibtisem Genfood in France for that report. And that does it for this ABC News Live update. I'm Diane Macedo. Thanks for joining us. And remember, ABC News Live is here for you all day with the latest news, context, and analysis. I'll see you back here at 3 p.m. Eastern with Terry Moran for The Breakdown. Stay safe. Have a great day.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.